In the last couple episodes, we learned how to add effects to a website using jQuery. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to change these effects and how to stop them once we started animating. So as you guys can see in front of me here, I have a very basic website that has a button inside of it that says click me to stop animating. And I also have a button down here that says click me to start animating. And as you guys can see, when I click the button, it gets bigger. And then after a while, after about three seconds, the text gets bigger. So what I want to do is I want to stop this animation from happening once I click this button. So inside my code, as you guys can see, I have a very basic script inside the top of my website that has a selector that goes and selects the actual box. Then when I click it, something is going to happen. And then afterwards, it's going to start animating the box in here, changing the width and the height. And that's going to happen for about three seconds. Then after that has happened, it's going to select the box again and do something else to it, which is right now changing the font size of the text inside of it. So the way I want to do this is, first of all, I want to actually change these correctly. Now, right now, as you guys can see, I selected the box. Then again, below it, I selected the same box and did something else to it. But we can actually do this much simpler, which is we can actually chain these directly right after each other. So the way we can chain events instead of writing it like this, where we select the same object two times in a row, is I can actually go directly after the first object here and say, well, after we do the first animation, I'm just going to go and say punctuation and then animate a second time and then do something else. And again, we're just going to do the same thing as down here. So I'm just going to select everything we have here, which is the entire animation and do it right afterwards. And then I can actually delete the second one down here. So now I'm basically doing the exact same thing as I had before, where I say, well, I select some kind of element, then I want to animate it and do this to it. Then afterwards, I want to animate the same object doing this thing instead. So we can also do this using other things, such as if I want to fade out at the end, I can actually go ahead and change another effect to it. So if I want to fade out at the end, I can also do that and I can just chain it right after each other. So we're to actually click this again. You guys can see when I refresh the browser and click it, the first animation runs. Then after it's done, the second one goes and then it should fade out like so. So this is how we can chain events right after each other. Now let's actually go ahead and talk about stopping animation from happening after we activated the animation. So right now I have a button down here that says click me to stop animating. I haven't done anything inside jQuery to actually stop the event from happening. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say we have another click event. So I'm going to say we have a selector. I'm going to go ahead and choose the button down there. So I'm just going to say button dot click parentheses semicolon. And then I have a function inside the parentheses like so. Inside the curly brackets down here, I'm going to go ahead and select the actual box up here, which right now is animating and say I want to stop the animation from happening. And again, when I want to stop the animation, it's not only the animate effect we can stop, we can stop all sorts of effects such as fade in, fade out and slide if I want to. So the stop function we have inside jQuery stops everything from happening. So we went ahead and selected the content box. Then afterwards I can say dot stop parentheses semicolon. And right now we have two different parameters inside the stop function. Right now we have the first one determines if all effects inside the content box needs to stop immediately or if it should only be the current effect that's actually running. The second parameter is going to decide if all the effects that is inside content box needs to immediately actually run and then stop. So to give you guys an example here, let's actually go and run this code before writing any kind of parameters inside the parentheses, meaning that right now both parameters is going to be set to false. So if we were to actually go inside my browser, refresh, click the button and then click to stop animating. You guys can see I stopped the first effect, but the second one is running. If I refresh again, click the button, stop the animation, and then again, stop the second animation by clicking the second time. You guys can see I can keep stopping the animations from happening. So what we can do now is if I were to change the parameters inside the stop function, I can go and say we have a true parameter inside the first one, meaning that right now if I were to go back inside the browser and refresh, it should immediately stop all animation from happening inside this button down here. So if I click here and click, nothing else runs inside the animation. Everything stops and not only the current animation that's actually running. 
if I go back inside my code and say I have a second parameter that I want to set to true, then when I click the button, it's going to finish off all the animations immediately and stop them. So if we were to refresh and click the button, you guys can see that all the animations finish and then stop. So this is how we can chain events inside jQuery as well as stop animations from happening inside our code. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.